What is going on guys? My name is Eric from Online Biz TV where we teach you everything you need to know about online business. In today's video, we're just going to talk about failing businesses and how to deal with failure in your business. Let's jump into the video. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like and comment so we'll know what you want us to do in the future. You're probably watching this video because you have some struggles within your business and you're thinking about maybe shutting it down, it's failing, you don't know what to do. So in this video, I'm going to give you a few simple steps to help you understand if you need to shut it down or not and try to give you some alternative solutions. You need to understand that maybe no matter what you do, your business is going to fail. And if it is, you must face the reality. Now, if your business is failing, it might be due to multiple reasons. It can be either that you didn't understand your customers, right? So you didn't build the right product. It can be that you build a great product to a problem nobody has. I think this may be the biggest one. Sometimes you create a product, you believe it, but actually nobody else needs it or at least not willing to pay for it. The third one could be, you know, you made some wrong decisions along the way. It can be product decisions, it can be marketing decisions, pricing decisions, business decisions, or, you know, it can be some external factors like something personal suddenly happened with one of your family members, so you need to cash out. It can be, you know, some new tech coming into the market that you didn't anticipate, some changes in the economy like COVID. I'm sure it's affected many businesses. Any of those can really cause failure in your business and then you need to figure out what to do. In most cases, it happens in the early stages when you're just starting out and you're just unable to lift it up. When it happens, you need to figure out what to do and you need to know the right steps. By the way, I'm talking out of experience. We had our fair share of failing apps. Some of them we managed to twist and get them profitable and thrive and grow over time. Some of them we had to shut down. Again, due to all of the reasons I mentioned before. Now, I need you to do something small for me, guys. If you are struggling with your business, please type down yes in the comment section below. If no, just type no, because I want you guys to know that you're not alone. Many people struggle with their businesses. That's completely fine. You can also talk to each other in the comment section. Maybe you can help each other out. And also, you know, it's going to give some engagement and you know, we're doing this for free. So that's going to help us a little bit. And I want to see your answers as well. The first thing you need to know is to understand where your bottleneck is. If you built the wrong product, then you probably need to do some major decisions and changes. But to understand if you're in this category, there are a few things you can do. First of all, you need to get real feedback on your product. And that means you can't ask your friends, you can't ask your family, you can't ask anyone you know. It must be someone neutral and it's even best if it doesn't talk directly to you because if you understand you build a product, then it might be less open to tell you what's wrong with it. So there are a few ways to go about it. First of all, if there are any relevant Facebook groups that are either your ideal customers or, you know, people that are know a thing or two about SaaS products, you can ask there and ask for feedback. You can also pay for this feedback, you know, given like Amazon gift card or something. Another way to do that would be use tools like usertesting.com. This is a tool where you pay people to basically test your product in multiple different devices from different countries and you pay a very low amount for this and then you get huge results at the end. A high recommended. The third way would be to utilizing your existing users. If you got any, you can use tools like Hotjar to, you know, record their actions on your app and then try to identify different issues within the product. You can also add like in-app surveys this way, you know, to get some extra feedback. So these are the three ways to get some true feedback and I highly recommend using these. Now, it's important that you encourage these people to be as brutal as they can. The more brutal they are, the more you're going to benefit from it. And by the way, we're going to talk a little bit later about what what to do if actually you build the wrong product. For now, I'm just gonna assume that you got some good feedback and you were able to move forward. The other thing, and this is usually the biggest one, you're just not in a product market fit, which means that there are still a few key missing functionalities or features from this product in order for it to fit the market you're aiming to get to. In order to understand which features these are, again, you need to get this feedback from your existing users. I highly recommend using a tool called Hello Next. We use it in all of our products. It allows different customers to vote up different feature requests. They can add multiple things. Even your support agents or yourself can vote in the name of customers after talking to them. And then they get notified when these features comes out. It helps you build this robust roadmap based on customer needs. And it's 
really, really a great tool we recommend and, and use ourselves. So you can check it out. Third thing can be, you know, many times pricing is the issue. Many times you build a product and you want to make revenue right from the get go. So you introduce like this pricing plan, like $20 a month, and then you get zero users. So what I would recommend do is start with a free plan, you know, even make the product completely free. Just get some people through the door, get them to use the product and get feedback. Okay. Don't worry about revenue at the beginning. First, you need to understand the value of your product. You need to know that it works. Then you can worry about a monetization and how to drive revenue out of these customers. You need to think long term. Don't think about these customers that are coming in. Oh my God, uh, I have a user. I need to get as much money out of him as I can. This means that you don't believe in your product. If you do believe in your product, you believe that people will stay with your product for years to come. So even if you give them, you know, three, four, five months completely free, there is nothing wrong about it. With our product, we started with two months free trial. Now it's like one month free trial. And we also have a very generous free plans in most of our products if, if it's possible for us. So I do recommend go this route. Don't think short term, think long term. You want to make the product fit as many people as possible and free usually fits more people. Start there, then utilize all the different things we talked about to, you know, upgrade people. The last thing that is usually a missing part of the puzzle specifically for developers is the marketing. Ask yourself what you really done to promote this product. Did you just post it one time on social? on your Facebook profile or Twitter or something like that? Did you just post in a Facebook group? Did you just run a single Google campaign or Facebook campaign, let it run for a while and killed it? Also, did you optimize the results after that? Did you do anything to really think through the marketing? Because developers usually they're very technical, they're very logical, but the marketing doesn't come natural for them. Another thing that you can do as a developer is use your developing skills to work on the marketing. For example, if you build an integration with a marketplace or an ecosystem that your customer might be in, it can drive you traffic pretty much for free. And this is, by the way, everything we talk about in this channel, if you haven't noticed. So if you want to learn more about it, just check the channel, tons of videos talking about how to utilize integrations in order to grow your business. Now, if you've done all of these things and still the product isn't moving anywhere, I think it's time for you to talk to an expert, get some consultation, either from a friend that you know that knows what he's doing, a colleague, anyone that you think that can give you some advice that's going to help you move forward. By the way, and Facebook groups is also so great you can find great people there i also recommend clarity.fm that we are available by the way it's a marketplace for people who needs advice but the price per hour is very expensive on some people you can just pay per minutes of course so if you just want to get 10 minutes of the time from an expert you really want to talk with you can just pay by the minute so you can check it out we are in there too if you're interested you really can get some advice from experts that just is going to be gold it's just going to be pure gold for you so i highly recommend take this route even if consultation costs a little money you never know what you're going to get out of it if after the consultation you still don't know what to do i think it's time for you to make some drastic changes in the product and the one true big tip i have for you is please don't get romantic with your idea and the product because usually you're just going to drive into a brick wall eventually i see it many times where developers insist that they're just going to keep work no matter what but you know you need to become a data driven driven scientists and businessmen and not just fall in love with your idea and decide I'm going to do it no matter what. If it's time to move on, move on. The thing is, when I say move on, I mean, it's good to be persistent, but within the limits of reality, okay? If you've done everything you can do and it's still not working, don't just stay there, move on. And when I say move on, you need to understand it's not necessarily killing the product. Before we move forward, I wanna ask you, are you romantic with your product? Really ask yourself, are you in love with your product to a point where even if everybody is going to tell you to quit, you're going to keep going? If the answer is yes, please say yes in the comment section below. If no, say no. If you commented yes, please start becoming a data-driven businessman and not just someone who falls in love with an idea. After we understand that something is going wrong, after we have looked at all the different factors that can cause your business to fail and we've talked to an expert, now you have one of two things you can do. One, which is the one I prefer, is just pivoting the product, which means shifting the way the product looks, feels the main features. You can use everything you built until now and just have it as a feature within the main product, but you need to change it. By now, you should have enough feedback from customers to understand what's wrong with the product, at least in a very big level. You need to understand what they're looking for, and then you can really build it into the product. And you know, who knows, maybe the product you originally build will get some traction in the future. Maybe you're too innovative. Maybe you're too much ahead of the market.
market so that customer can't understand it. But if you build it as a side feature into the big product you're building, it might work. People eventually might use it. And I just wanted to give you an example. We had a product called Easy Call. We had to pivot it and eventually it succeeded and it grew. And we have a video about it. We're going to put it, the link somewhere in here. You can watch it. Basically, we tried to build something nobody really needed, even though we really thought it was cool. We fell in love with it for a while. Eventually, we decided to pivot and then things started to work for us. We have another product where the main issues, we fixed it. And then suddenly within a span of one year, the revenue multiplied by 10. So these things are possible. By the way, if you want us to make this video about the other product, because we didn't make one, just comment in the comment section below. We'll do that for you. And I want you to understand also about pivoting. Some of the biggest companies in the world are actually a pivot. They changed the product from what it was originally because they saw the potential or the previous product just failed. I'll give you some example. Slack, the messaging app, they started it as a video game. We all know YouTube. They started as a video dating service or website. Android, they started as a camera operating system. And Nintendo started as a trading card game. So you really can never know what your product can turn into, but you need to be agile. You need to adapt yourself to the market. You can't just decide for the market. That's never a good idea. The other option would be to just, you know, sell it. Even when I say sell it, it doesn't have to be completely selling it. If you think that you lack some of the experiences or some of the skills like business skills or product skills, you can partner up with someone and give him some percentages and then you guys can work together. Another option is use some marketplaces like Microacquire or Flippa or Empire Flippers to actually list your product for sale and you can at least cash out and move on to the next project. Maybe someone else is a better fit for this product than you. Maybe someone else can lift it up. Maybe you're just the wrong person. We acquired one product about a year and a half ago from someone who didn't make it. Okay, the product just died down over time. We got it. Now it's actually growing month over month in terms of users, in terms of revenue. So it's possible. Maybe you're just not the right person. And you need to be willing to do that. At least now you learn something and you're going to move on to the next project when you have more experience. By the way, if you want us to make a video about the app we acquired and, and grew, just let us know in the comment section below. We'll do that. No problem. I want to finish up this video just to let you know you can't really lose. You never fail as long as you learn, as long as you move forward. The one thing you don't want to be is be romantic with your idea and, you know, just jump out of a cliff without a parachute. You want to always have something to fall back to and you want to always learn and move forward. Your experience and the set of skills you're acquiring over time, you really never know when it's going to come up for you back in the future. So just keep learning, be reasonable, be data driven and move forward. Guys, I really hope this video helped you. If you liked it, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, like it, comment, so we'll know what you guys want us to do next. We'll see you on the next video. Ciao.